So welcome now formally to our third Scrum Wednesday. This time with us, we have uh, James Carpenter of Agile Carpentry. He is an um, Agile coach with long history of helping Agile transformations. He comes from the trenches of development and uh, he is currently a PST and last trainer candidate. So without any further comments, James, please do take on. Okay. Start. Uh, th thank you, Bogdan. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for all your time today. Um, we'll, we'll get into the agenda in a minute, but uh, first off, uh, Bogdan and I are going to uh, do a little role play for you but before we do let me let me set that up um here we go so um let's do slideshow okay so i would imagine most of you are familiar with the stacy matrix where if the technology is you know not well understood if the requirements are not well understood this complex systems domain if you were in uh uh, Bogdan could say the same thing. We could talk about, uh, Bogdan, you want to give him a, a, a Kinefin version of the same thing? Oh, yes. I do understand that, that, uh, Stacy matrix is sort of us thing in Europe. We do more of a, of a Kinevin, but the idea same, is yeah. that the same, just it's more or less different representation. One of the, yes, one of the interesting uh, thing is that in Kinevin you've got this sort of a ledge between the simple and the chaotic, meaning that things that tend to be simple, if left unattended, can go drastically chaotic. Like the best things there I can think of are any sort of automated scripts, any sort of well-known rules that are never documented, that once that knowledge is lost, everything goes boom. But the most important part here, I think, is distinction between complex and complicated. James, do you want to take on that one? Oh, sure. So I, I think all of us would realize that, you know, we work in a space where, I mean, who here has seen that the APIs that you're trying to program against don't work the way that you think they would, right? They don't work the way they're documented or they, they have some quirk about them or some compiler gives you an error that you didn't anticipate. I believe uh, Bogdan was talking about snowflake environments across developer environments where little subtle changes drive you crazy. Um, uh, who here has seen requirements change in the middle of an effort? You know, I, I think everyone's probably experienced that, right? So that that's the nature of this kind of work. It's not like taking a shirt to the dry cleaner. Um, it's not that waterfall is wrong. It's just terribly, terribly misapplied to uh, the complex systems domain. Um, so what, uh, there was a guy named uh, Eli Goldratt passed away and, and he made the statement that treating estimates as commitments for complex project work is in conflict with the desire of the individual to be seen as a reliable person. And that if you do so, you will destroy your morale and transparency this will in turn destroy your for, your quality. And because you've lost your quality, because you've lost your, uh, your morale, your transparency, it's not safe. There's not psychological safety. It actually destroys your forecast accuracy as well. Um, and so, uh, Bobby and I are gonna role play this out. And so uh, we're gonna take on a there's, a, there's a project that we're gonna do and it turns out that it takes, you know, three tasks to get it done. And each of the tasks, might take a couple days to get done and they might take three weeks to get done. So if you will, the area, there we go. The area under the curve, you know, there may be a 50% probability of completion in say three days, but to have a 95% probability of completion, you're way out here, right? Not because the engineer doesn't know what they're doing, just because it's the nature of the work. Um, any questions before I, before Bogdan and I start up about what we're up to here?
Okay. All right. So Bogdan, I, I've got this project I got to do, and you know, I'm a I'm a project manager here, and and I'm told that you're like the best engineer in the company, and I'm told that you can do the software development and the test development, and you're scr you're a uh, system administrator. I mean, I'm just like delighted to have you on my project, and I'm I'm just so glad to have you. Um, now. I need to give, I need to ask you for an estimate for, you know, there's these three tasks that we need to do. And I need to ask you for an estimate for the first one. And it's just an estimate, you know, um, but, but uh, can you, can you give me a number so I can, you know, I need to put it in my spreadsheet. So I'm kind of keep a track of this stuff. Well, looking at the amount of work, that looks rather simple. I, I didn't delve into it, but I would say two to three days top. Two to three days. Okay. That's, you know, I'll put that in the spreadsheet. It's just an estimate, you know, and uh, uh, I'll get back to you. I've, I've got to go. Uh, I got to do some golfing and I got to do some sales calls and I'll, I'll see you here in a minute. Mm. Well, looking at the development right. side of it now, looks like, you know, it's, 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 it's been about a week and you said that would take you what, three days. Was it you said two days? What, um, or how, how are we doing? Well, there, you know, there has been a sort of a change. There's there, I have ran into some legacy APIs, so I'm, I'm somewhere I'm converging, but I think I, I probably need a couple more of days. It's, it's much more complex than initially estimated. All right. I, I got some more work, work to do. I'll, I'll be back. Hey, I just just landed. It's it's been about two weeks, and and I know you were working on that task for me. Uh, how how's it how's it going? Finally done. I it's it's off in testing, and just it's just a matter of hours. But yes, it's done. It's done. You said it's in testing. That doesn't sound like done to me. Well, okay. Uh, technicality. There is some some more things to be tested because again, integration is a is a hell. But I would I would say that you can consider it it will be done by the end of the day i'm just literally ironing out all the next all right i'll check on you here in a few hours all right okay okay it's towards the end of the day i just want to check in how, how we how we doing we all are done. done documented shipped you know you know we started this with you saying it was two days and and you actually took about two weeks I'm really, I just want you to know I'm not happy. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be able to say good things, but you know, just, all right. It is what it is. Thank you for your work. Hey, Bogdan, I, I hear, uh, um, We've we've got a, I've got another task for you, and and I know we've had our problems in the past, and uh, you know, but you know, let's just put that behind us and and let's move forward. And uh, can you please give me an estimate for this for this second piece of work? You know, it's just an estimate. It's not a commitment. Just an estimate. Um, uh, how long do you think it's going to take? Well. Honestly, on a first glance, looks simple, but due to our last experience, I would really, really like to have some extra leeway time. I think, you know, I would go for let's say a week. Maybe a week. Let, let's 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 be conservative there. Let's let's go ten days. Okay. Okay. Ten days. Okay. Um. You know that that's a long time. That's a lot longer than I thought you were going to tell me. But I know that I know you're trying to start to act like a professional, and I appreciate that. And, and I will go up the uh, I'll go up to upper management, and I'll explain to them why uh, you know why this is challenging, and that and that you need more time. Uh, so uh, you know that's okay. I, I'm I'm we we can work through this. Okay. So all right. Um, I'll come and check on you in a day or so. So just just make sure things are okay. All right. Hey, man, I, I just had 
I just had good dinner with, with a client. That was, that was fun. It's been about, uh, you know, uh, we talked yesterday. Is that how, how are things going on this thing? I, I know it's, you know, you said it's going to take a couple of weeks. Well, I actually struck, uh, uh, you know, the gold line there. I think I'll, I'll probably be done tomorrow. It's, it's much less work and especially now familiar with the system. It's pretty simple. It's a quick fix. Actually. Do you know how? Okay. I'll, I'll check later. All right, it's been another day. We're two days into this, um, of this, what I think you said 10 days, I think is what you said. How, how are we doing? Are we, are we done? Fully done, tested, shipped, documented, everything. Everything You're is right. Tested? Yep. Do you know how much political capital I spent getting the, getting the CTO and the CEO to give you air cover? and let you take the 10 days that you said it was going to take. I mean, I heard that you were like the best engineer in the company and, Oh, you do this and you do that. And you know, what I find is just totally unprofessional. You know, if I went to a, if I went to a contractor and he said, Oh, I don't know, James, your house is going to cost, you know, a hundred thousand or, or 2 million. I don't really know. And you know, it might be done in a month. It might be done in two years. You know, I would never hire that guy. So why the heck should I be having you on my team? I'm just, you know, if, if performance management comes up, when we do, when we do 360s, when they ask me for my opinion as to your performance, I just want you to know that I am pleasant things to say. And, you know, I like to be very for, straightforward and open and transparent. And I just want you to know that I'm unhappy. You know, I think you should be, you should feel you should feel privileged that I'm that I'm willing to be as open about how problematic you are instead of just firing your behind your tukas, right? So, all right. Hopefully, I don't have to work with this guy again. You know. <sighs> oh, yeah, Bogdan. Mm. I know we've had our challenges in the past, but, uh, you know, I've got a third task for you. And, and, and I talked to, I talked to various managers and my understanding is you're really the one to do this work for me. So let's see if we can move past, you know, I, I may have been a little bit over, over upset last time and I apologize for that. Not so much for the underlying, but I maybe I let myself get a little bit out of control. So, but we'll, we'll try to move forward here. Um, can you please give me an estimate for uh, this third task? Well, I don't know, looking at it, I would, I would think it's, it's, uh, uh, um, something like eight days eight days okay I, I, I'd like to see that done in eight days uh, it's actually a quick fix uh, more more slack time oh man oh hey it's it's, it's been a week and, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, I, I, I didn't get my upgrade last night and they, they put me back in the back of the plane. It, it was rough, but, uh, you know, I, I tell you what the steak dinner I had with the client, that was, that was good stuff though. Um, so how are we doing on this, this, uh, this third task? Well, everything running according to our agreement. So, you know, we said in eight days, it's been five. So I would say I'm something like five eighths complete. Oh, okay. That's, hey, hey you know, this is good. I hope. All right. I'll, I'll check back with you in a bit. Okay. Time to strike go time. Hmm. 
Yeah. You know, it's been about seven days. How, how are we doing, Bogdan? As, as agreed, it will be done tomorrow. It's in final stages of testing. Oh, oh you know, this is, this is, this is improving. Right. Hmm. Come back. Hey, Bob, it's been about, been about nine days now. I had an extra day. I had some other stuff to do. How, how are we doing on this, this, this task? Done yesterday as agreed. Wow. You know, you, you know, uh, I think you've turned a corner. I, you know, I, I just, I'm so happy. I mean, it, you took what you said it would take. The level of professionalism I'm seeing is, is fantastic. Um, you know, Bogdan, if I have more work in the future, you know, I really hope you'll be the one that do the work for me because, uh, you know, this is just great. And, and look at how, how well it's working. Um, you know, if, if there's an opportunity to, you know, I know I kind of feel bad for some of our pasts and, uh, you know, if there's an opportunity to put you up for a promotion or a bonus, you just let me know. I'm happy to write a recommendation letter for you. You know, everything Ooh. they said about you being so great. I'm just, I'm just really happy about it. You know, you, it's great to have you on the team. Thanks, sir. It's a pleasure as well. All right. So where do we do gallery view? All right. So who here can relate to what we just heard? Or, sorry, I guess it's kind of hard with <laughs> everyone's got their mics dead. I understand. Uh, okay. So let Just me uh, feel free to join in, guys. You can drop comments. I'll be moderating them. You can join in via microphone. You can raise hands and everything. <laughs> and yes, as Alexander says, probably all of us. So silence of approval. All right. So I, I know as an engineer, I've experienced that all the time. And so uh, what happens here, get this where I can, is you know, it's exactly what Goldratt said. Treating estimates as commitments for complex project work is in conflict with the desire of the individual to be seen as a reliable person. This is a paraphrase. He said it in uh, uh, Beyond the Goal. And I think this is a situation kind of like uh, physicists usually do their best work when they're young and they bring new ideas to the table. And historians usually do their best work when they're, when they're very old and they've accumulated a life of experience and, and, and reading and study. And then the, the historian's able to say something really interesting. Uh, it seems that with Goldratt, although he wrote a bunch of great stuff earlier on, this was a recorded lecture series, which was probably not that long before he passed away. Um, and unlike the goal where it takes, you know, if you've read the goal, you would think, uh, uh, you know, couldn't he have said this in one chapter instead of a whole book? It's an easy book to read because it tells us, you know, the story. And, and if you're familiar with, uh, uh, what's the IT version? It's called, uh, do you remember what it's called, Bogdan? It's a translation of this to the IT space. Uh, no, uh, uh, you mean the drive or which one? No, no. Uh, the goal was rewritten with an IT, with an IT focus. Oh, no. I can't remember the name, forgetting the name of the book. Um, but, uh, you know, it, Go Right would often speak with so much sugar coating on what he was saying that it was hard to, to get the crux of it. And what was the beauty of the, this lecture series is he actually is talking at a different, uh, at a different level to the audience. Um, and he's able to express things that I haven't seen expressed that well. And so if we treat estimates as commitments, you can see that eventually Bogdan learned that, you know, if I want to be able to continue to advance in the company, if I want to ensure that, that I have continuity of income for my family, that, you know, I really have to align to this, what is really an unrealistic expectation. Um, as a project manager, I'm the, my behavior, I set estimates, but what I actually did was obviously commitment, right? I treated an estimate as a commitment, even though I said the word estimate. Um, and I would argue that's disrespectful of the work because the work is, uh, the work is up here in this complex systems domain. 
and it's therefore disrespectful of the people doing the work. And if you treat estimates, if you, if you, if you treat estimates purely as estimates, some things will take longer than you thought, some things will take less than you thought, your cumulative probability distribution will get tighter. There's always a possibility of lateness. You cannot remove that. It's possible that uh, Murphy shows up and every single task takes the far end of what it could have taken. Uh, but odds are, if you have enough thin slices, um, that the probability will get tighter and tighter and uh, you'll have more predictability. On the other hand, if you treat estimates as commitments, then you force uh, your engineers to sandbag, but they're not really sandbagging because the truth is there is a significant chance that you know the monster comes out from under the bed and, and it does take three weeks or whatever. And that, that isn't like, that's the nature of the work. It's not uh, because the engineer doesn't know what they're doing. It's not because they're not professional. But if you do that, then everyone would keep the safety to themselves is the wording that uh, Goldratt would use. And so your, now your cumulative probability distribution is skewed way the heck over to the right. Um, you've, you've traded the possibility of lateness for the certainty of lateness. Um, another, uh, another problem, uh, uh, Ratterston, in the first chapter of his book, talks about uh, different problems with the current approach to current legacy approaches to software engineering management. And, you know, he lists a whole bunch of problems, failure to quantify cues, blindness to cues, worship of efficiency, hostility to variability, worship to conformance, blah, blah, blah. Um, and without getting into the details of each, uh, the point is that people are trying to use processes that are designed. Do I have a pointer? Uh, laser. Give me a laser red. How do I get a laser? I don't know that I get a laser. All right. Anyway, forget about lasers. Um, we don't have any, we don't have any uh, uh, sharks around to put lasers on their heads anyway. Um, so people are using, uh, they're trying to apply management paradigms designed for work in the simple, the simple space, or you call it the, uh, the obvious space. They're trying to apply that to the complex systems domain. And it's not that those approaches are fundamentally wrong. They're fundamentally wrong when applied to this type of work that any significant complex bespoke software engineering effort I've ever seen uh, uh, meets that. Um, any, any quick questions before I, we're, we're about to transition to, well, let's transition, let's show the breakout. So let me do, let me share the, I think, I gave it to me, I know you did. Um, do, do, do. Well, I'll do it the dumb way. Oops, wrong one. Okay, did everyone get this handout that Bogdan sent out? You should have it in a Word and a PDF format. Can you want to resend them the link in chat so they have it? Okay, you have the, I'll grab the link for him too. Uh, okay, here's Bogdan's link. I did that right. We transfer, we like to transfer stuff. All right, okay. So way at the bottom, it has an agenda. 
Oops, wrong one again. All right, Bogdan, are you seeing the breakout session guidelines? Is that the one I'm showing? Okay, good. Yes, okay. Trying good. Um, so at the bottom, there is an agenda for today. So we're going to do the role play we just did. We did. And we're about to do a breakout session. And then we're going to take the results of the breakout session and kind of uh, uh, put them together and then discuss what we learned from that. And then there's some bonus content that hopefully we'll have time for. And then we'll do a meeting retrospective and we'll close, close up the meeting. Um, the breakout session guidelines. So the, the intention is that and we'll do this individually before we do it as a group, before we do it in breakout sessions. So uh, uh, what does your breakout group believe to be the most relevant insights around the danger of treating estimates as commitments? Again, the deeper the insights, the more interesting our subsequent whole group discussions are likely to be. Um, here's an example. Uh, it's kind of a dummy insight. Uh, treating estimates as commitments destroys forecast accuracy. And it's kind of right off the slide. Um, when we do the breakout, uh, someone needs to do record keeping and timekeeping, whether you nominate someone or not, I don't care. Um, but, uh, and then we want to work as a group for about five minutes and figure out the, the, the deepest insights you can come up with as a group, just brainstorm as many as you can think of, and then work down and, and, and chew down to the, the best five that you have. So you may have come up with, you know, eight or nine or 10, See if you can crunch those down to the five that you believe to be the best. Uh, the reason that I have these, uh, these record keeper instructions is when y'all are sent off to a breakout room, whatever you come up with, and you'll probably type to each other in your chat, when Zoom brings you back to the combined group, you'll probably lose those chat, uh, anything you put in your chat in your breakout. So somebody in your small group needs to take whatever you came up with and stick it in like a text editor or something so you don't lose it. Um, when we get back as a group, I'm going to have y'all uh, at least one, you know, one person from each group uh, paste what you decided were your five best things into the chat window. And then uh, myself or probably Bogdan will, uh, will stick that into, uh, we'll stick that into this uh, voting tool that we have and we'll do basically an online equivalent of dot voting. Um, in order for that to be easy, based on this voting tool, it wants each inside on a single line. A couple sentences is fine. There just can't be line breaks. That's just what that tool wants. Um, and then I think we may actually do 10 minutes on our breakout. The, uh, somebody needs to make sure that when you get towards about three minutes left, you need to stop brainstorming and start figuring out which ones are the, the top five that you want to bring back to the bigger group and uh, make sure that you've got them written down so that you can uh, uh, copy paste them back into the group chat when you're ready. Um, here's a few thoughts that uh, might be helpful when you're trying to, again, the question you're answering is, what, do your breakout, what does your breakout group believe to be the most relevant insights around the danger of treating estimates as commitments? Uh, sometimes this might stimulate some conversation. I've seen managers say, well, I always gave accurate estimates when I was an engineer, you know, so why is this any different? Why, you know, uh, James is full of it. Um, he did grow up on a dairy farm. And uh, why aren't you being overly dramatic? You know, this seems a bit extreme position to take. Uh, the business needs estimates as commitments to survive. You know, this is not, we're not doing this for fun. Um, no one really treats estimates as commitments anyway. The truth is we leave a little bit of headroom and, you know, I always kind of pad what Bogdan tells me as an engineer. And so, uh, I find that may help you come up with ideas that relate to, you know, insights that you think are important. Uh, again, any insights that you think are really worth talking as a group, put them in there. Uh, so that's it. And then uh, uh, any, any questions before we take five minutes to work as, or let's say three minutes to work as individuals, and then we'll switch to the breakout. Uh, so let me, let me stop sharing. Okay, any, any, any questions before we move to the breakout? I would say none. I'd say none. Okay, so let's give them, 
So Bogdan, while you get ready for uh, doing a breakout, I will give them a timer. All right. Three minutes. Write, write your own thoughts as an individual. Okay. All right, Bogdan. Um, what do we let you want to do? What ten minutes? What? It yes, let's do ten minutes, guys. Please do do stay in because of the rest of the participants. I'll switch you now into breakout rooms. Feel free to turn on the cameras, interact, chat. If somebody is in an inactive group, feel free to drop it and return back to the main lobby. See you all in ten minutes. Oh, okay. Everybody back? Can you yeah. hear me? Cool. Yeah. James, you want to take over back? Uh, you are muted. Sorry. Is that better? Okay. Much better. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Bogdan, you're getting the survey ready for us? 
Yes, I have two groups. Anybody want wants to drop something else? Dushan and James dropped. Drop the message. Anybody else? Oh, okay. I see Luca dropped quite quite loud here on us. I'll I'll just distribute it. Whoa, well, those are some sentences. So. So what Bogdan is doing is y'all put these in. He's going to go to this uh, CIVS tool and he's going to fill out this poll. And then we're going to all take the poll. And what it lets us do is it lets us, uh, uh, we get to force rank all of the, the different choices. This is actually used for like voting. It's called con concordant voting or something. Um, but anyway, it lets us rank the choices and then we'll know uh, which one are the most important ones that people thought and then we can talk through them and most likely I'll have whoever wrote them uh, you know explain their their thinking on the, each one because this is really more about the group than it's about me this is not about me it's about the group discussion just a second I'm in a process so excuse me Bogdan where do I put my uh, just throw them in the chat in the chat, paste it in the chat. Uh -huh. Okay. To you or to everyone? To everyone. Mm -hmm. Let's wait a moment. Oh, how do I? Okay, I'll have to create a new world. Sorry, Anna. Uh... Messed it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, I, I was a, 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 it's a bit too quick with on a trigger with creating worlds. If there's any duplicates that make that are obvious dupes, just combine them. Okay, just sorry, one more moment. Uh, James, do you want to? Uh, I'll need a moment. My net is killing me. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, anyone? Uh, let's see if there's anything in here. We'll just talk while while he's doing his doing his hard work. Um, if you had a look bigger, it may be it's max risky for the whole company. If you plan your whole, oh, that's interesting. I like what Luca. Uh, Luca. Or whoever in Lucas' group about the the bigger task in a complex environment's mask risky for the whole company. Something tells me that he get a lot of votes. Sorry, I didn't hear. All started, guys. If you oh, want. Oh, we started. Okay. Yes. So it's in, I dropped it into the link out when it gives you that email, the voting link. 
Yes, let me just drop it to everybody. Okay. And start. So take that link and chat. Everybody pop that in a browser and go go decide what you think is most important. Uh, and I'll give us. And you can drag and drop. This thing's it's kind of clever that way. I'll give you five minutes all to some. Feel free to vote the things that you think will get the most interesting discussion. That's that's another way, way to do the voting. Uh, would you dot vote if you were going to talk about it? But for now, we just rank it. Yeah, rank it. What's worth talking about? Then, uh, you know, some of them may be true, and but but not much to talk about. What What do you think is most worth our time of our discussion time? Let's take another two minutes or so. Got seven votes in. Tick tock, tick tock. Don't do that. I, I'm afraid of the crocodiles. <laughs> Well, the joke in the U.S. is in Louisiana, everyone has to keep one crocodile length between each other during the pandemic. One large crocodile. Generally, I would keep myself one crocodile away from the cro crocodile minimum. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's what Stephen Colbert said. <laughs> Another six feet to stay away the crocodile itself. Okay. 
Okay, time is ending. Anybody closing in? Scream now or going once, twice. Eh, fini. All right, what do we get? We get uh, 17 votes cast. We go oh, 20 votes cast. Here we go. Every, everybody's panicking, hitting, hitting. <laughs> so at the last minute. I didn't know what to do either. Okay, increases this pressure on the team. Uh, who, uh, where, where did our video go? There we go. Uh, all right, pressure on the team. Who wants to talk about that one? Who, who put that forward and uh, wants to, ex to explain your thoughts? Well, we can always, my thought on it is that not only it creates pressure of the team, it motivates team to be, to, to, to not be team, to work on, on personal gain and not on team, team gain. It's more expected, I, I would honestly expect then people to, to get more into my Jira line, my swim lane, my tickets, my work than in actual team. The best case scenario, if the team is mature, they'll they'll get around it and and be on on the same boat. Worst case scenario, it's every man for himself. Anybody else? Any thoughts? Deep insights? Okay. What else? What else do we have? We had a uh, uh, high increase of stress and uncomfortableness. Anyone want to talk about that? Kind of the same as the first one. Uh, you want to look at the most productive engineer? Well, let's just let's just let's just leave it open. Uh, of all of these. Um, anybody want to call out any particular one and talk about it? Ah, James, uh, do share your screen uh, for people. Oh, 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 okay. Sorry, I thought I doubt that everybody can see the poll. So I thought maybe they were. Um, there you go. This is apparently what our results were. So this one, this one got the most votes. And uh, these two are kind of the same. Um, I thought this, I thought number eight was interesting. Um, if anybody wants to talk about. Um, it was my idea actually, because I've seen so many PMO meetings where <clears throat> you put estimates forward, which is not, which have nothing to do with reality. And I think it's very risky. I, I agree. Anybody else think, any, any, anybody want to respond to that? Well, you are basing your whole concept of lie in the end. And that's that's it's better to be to be probabilistic than and real than than unrealistic and and you know fluffy. See, I, I think it's interesting to know that in something like Scrum and, and any any decent half decent agile approach, you know, the development team is held accountable for quality as per the definition of done. Or if they were in a Kanban system, they're held accountable to their, you know, what are their exit criteria on that, on the various activity states, right? And the, the sum of all the activity states is basically the definition of done. Uh, sorry, the sum of all the exit criteria would basically be the definition of done. Um, and we have to accept that for this kind of work, we can't predict exactly how much we're going to get done in a given time frame. That's not possible for this kind of work. Um, and so what we have to do is we have to say, okay, let's accept that variability and let's manage to that reality. Who will make sure that the, that the development team promises to build things right? We don't know exactly how much is going to get built, but we promise that what we build, we'll build the, the best we know how. Individual engineers in control of, they're not in control of 
you know, Bogdan was not in control of whether it would take him as much or as little time as he thought. He was in control of when he said it's done, he knows that it met whatever his, uh, you know, um, then you're holding someone accountable for what they can control. In the same way, the product owner or whoever's playing that uh, prioritization business kind of hat, um, it's not possible to see in what time frame. What we have to do is say, well, let's get the most important things done. And if we don't get the other things done, well, it's not the end of the world. Just, so, sorry, just, again, a forecast it, uh, is purely... Sorry, yes, just one question. Are you speaking about uh, oh, yes. Sprint or whole project? Because I totally confuse what we are trying to succeed right now. Because on Sprint, we can give some estimates for some prediction for some kind of work on some part of work. But if you are looking for a whole project to give estimation, that's almost always fails. Let's be honest about it. So I would say that even within a sprint, it fails. Yeah, but in sprint, it's so much easier because you have a lot of data which as inputs, so you can uh, be approximately right with output, which you will, what you will uh, uh, get which what is going to be a result of and, and I agree that you can I agree days. that you can have an idea right yeah. you know I agree that if you if you focus if you if you make sure to you know maybe you even open the open a, a sorry during the sprint planning and you take a look at you know just how big is this or maybe you did that in in uh, refinement uh, you certainly can get a good idea um, but I think fundamentally when push, you may or may not get everything done that you hope to get done. The real, the real issue is, are the things that you say are done, do they meet your quality standard? Do they meet your explicit definition of done? Well, that's something. And I agree with else. you that the small, if you, sorry, what's that? I, uh, I said that that's totally something opposite. If you're looking about the definition of done and it's something done by, uh, all requirements that's fine but if we are just looking by estimation that's totally different approach from my from my perspective isn't it because on definition done you need for every of uh, those stories you need to have what is what is done what you need to finish until it's done so that's mean to pass all tests to create unit tests to be all kind of fork that's okay but estimation when you give estimation on the on the sprint planning uh, you still don't have definition of done for many of uh, user stories in many different uh, projects in many different startups. You don't have them. You write them during the planning and during uh, uh, testing, uh, during uh, everything, during even uh, sprint. So I think this may be a confusion between uh, uh, acceptance criteria on a product backlog item and the definition of done. So the definition of done tends to be things like, we're gonna write unit tests for any new or modified code. We promise that we're gonna run load test and stress test on our code. We will promise that we will do, uh, uh, that we'll do rollback testing as well as roll forward testing, right? Um, so definition of done tends to be these sort of general engineering standards uh, it might include some documentation stuff. We promise that we will update the user manual to uh, to incorporate whatever new functionality we add. So that would be on your definition of done. Where to, uh, I don't know, to allow you to edit your user profile. And one of the acceptance criteria is that uh, you can enter an email address and that if the email is poorly formed it will uh, you know give an error back to the user it will have a you know some sort of appropriate user uh, ux experience so that would be very specific that's i mean will we receive that job or not is that, is that correct or not um i can accept that if you're doing a alex if you're if you're doing a fixed bid fixed scope project exactly like that 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 is that that is the constraint that is being imposed upon the management layer, right? Yep. And what I am saying is that is a misfit. That is that is that is a, uh, an impedance mismatch. That that under there's underlying assumptions there 
that it's possible to do that well, right? And I would argue that that's an impedance match to the nature of the work. This is not like building a house. It is not like uh, factory work. This hey, is like that. not that predictable. And what what is possible is it's possible for the business willing to bear the risk of this taking more or less time than, than, than our estimate. But if this problem happens, it's not our developer's problem, it's our problem, right? What they try to do is the business, whether we're talking about in a contract relationship or whether we're talking like uh, in-house software engineering development, what's happening mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. business is uncomfortable with that level of, of unpredictability and they're trying to make their risk which is because they're working in this, this is the nature of this kind of work. They're trying to make this risk the engineer's risk. And what I am saying is that that is, that is inappropriate. It is disrespectful of the nature of the work. It is therefore disrespectful of the people doing the work. And that if you want to be, and, and if you do it, it's going to backfire and it's going to backfire because people are going to start padding their estimates. You're going to destroy morale and transparency. You're going to, completely mess up your quality, which will then come back and kick you in the butt later and, or, or continually kick you in the butt. <laughs> and you're going to destroy your forecast accuracy because now everybody's keeping that safety to themselves. They're doing what Bogdan did in the last round, right? So you can want it to work. You know, you can want, you can, you can want to believe that you can have a fixed scope and a fixed date and a fixed cost Exactly like that. I don't but, agree with that approach. And, and, but it doesn't work. I, I don't have to believe in gravity. But if I walk out my window, if I jump out my window here, does gravity care if I believe in it or not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how would you work in an environment where the business people don't understand this, what you exactly described right now? So... So I think y'all are starting to get at the, the, the crux, we're starting to get at the crux of what I think that the issue is here. It's just fundamentally a mismatch to attempt to manage this kind of work using a management paradigm that's built for water, that's built for digging ditches, that's built for running factories. You know, even, even if you're doing lean, you know, or sorry, if you're doing like Toyota production system, even that won't survive being this deep in the complex systems domain. Uh, and so from a management perspective, you have a choice. You can either, you can live in fairyland and, and, and you can pretend that, that the work works the way that you want it to work, that you can treat estimates as commitments and you can go and, and, and try to apply those kind of pressures and that kind of management paradigm and you'll fail every single time. You'll produce garbage code. You'll have dates that slip. You'll have very unhappy engineers that are unengaged. You'll build stuff that nobody cares about. Um, or you can accept that this is the nature of the work, that there's this much variability. And you can use a management paradigm that holds people accountable for things they control, not things they don't control. Um, So, and you elaborated that you said um, the team is uh, in control of the defini definition of done, which makes sense. And something else? No, so I didn't. I didn't say that. I'm saying that. That I mean. Oh, sorry. Yes, the yes, the, the yes, the development team may well influence the definition of done. Certainly, you want the engineering professionals to help establish the quality standards. I think that's perfectly sensible. Just like if I go and have surgery, I expect the, the heart surgeon to help establish the, the quality guidelines by which the operating room is run, right? So sure, I'm, I'm good with that. What I was saying is, as a manager, as a, as a CEO, as a customer of a contract company, which goes back to the other example, um, you, can, you can pretend that the world works with fixed date and fixed scope 
and that you can you can you, just because you can apply it to a house and you can apply it to buying a car that you can apply it to this too you can you can have that mindset and if you do you will fail almost every single time and get substandard results or you can have the courage to accept the reality of the work and then manage to that reality instead of living in denial. And if you manage to that reality, the forecast accuracy will run circles around the waterfall guys. The quality will be radically better. The team will be engaged. Um, you know, people won't feel abused because you're not holding people accountable for things they don't control. You know, everything will get better. But if, if we go back to, uh, uh, where's my, uh, so we go back. So you'll get to this, right? And, and, and the more thin slices you have, the tighter the distribution will get, especially if these are nice, thin vertical slices that meet the invest test. But that doesn't remove the chance that there's always, there's always a possibility of lateness. You cannot get rid of that. But if you treat estimates as commitments, you will go from possible lateness to certainty of lateness, right? By the way, and I agreed with everything Veronica said about, you know, if you don't have a definition of done, the, de the, de the team should work that out. You know, that's important. That, that would be a great place to start because how can you estimate if you don't even have a clue what, what done means, right? Um, if everyone has a different opinion, you'd have to come to that. Uh. Uh, talking about this um, estimation for a project, I think your first slide also can help. In Which one? I'll, I'll, I'll move to I it. I think there was the first one. Uh, this one? The first one. No, the first, first, first. <laughs> the, the, this, okay, there you go. Yes, because uh, uh, this estimation is a kind of waterfall estimation that we have done the last 20 years. So if you want to build a house that's, that you are not going to change the scope, okay, you can do it. You Can you guarantee me that you are not going to change the scope so we can do it? But if not, let's do the uh, in agile way. So we cannot estimate in the same uh, waterfall way. It's different. It's an empirical way. And it's not like, and I think, Veronica, you're also saying that you don't really have a choice. Yeah, one basically. Is to, one is to pretend that gravity doesn't exist. Yeah, exactly. But that doesn't work. But that doesn't work very well. <laughs> exactly. So maybe with this picture, uh, <laughs> it's better. I don't know. <laughs> I Bye. think this, this picture, I didn't know it before, but can help a lot to open the eyes of the management who don't know what's going on because they don't see it. It's not like they deny that gravity doesn't exist. They, they just don't see it. They've Something. never done this kind of work, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. And look at the things that we interact with on our normal life. I mean, we buy cars, we buy houses, we get dry cleaning done. We do, you know, most of the services that we interact with, they're not in the complex space. They're, they're in complicated or simple or, or uh, obvious. There is always a Dilbert argument that every, every single person uh, raises to the level of their own incompetence. Oh. Yeah. So I, I think another argument you can make for software is uh, if you're not ready for the kind of variability that is innate to this kind of work, you should, as a business, you shouldn't be at the table, right? If you don't have the pocketbook to handle this kind of swing in how long it actually takes, then uh, I, I guess to some extent you shouldn't be in, not the game you should be playing. Um, but, but now remember, if we do enough small slices, uh, does anybody remember it's like the square, it's a square root of the, 
the number of slices or something, it, it determines the width of the peak. And the, the more of these things you get, the tighter that, that cumulative probability distribution gets. So slicing the heck out of things, as long as they're still meaningful business slices, as long as we're still measuring something that's a, a slice of functionality that means something from a product owner type perspective, um, which I think people tend to over slice things sometimes. Um, the more of those we get, the tighter our distribution gets, the more that we stay on top of uh, really fast feedback loops. It's like the, uh, you know, there's that study of those guys in fighter jets and like the guys that, that had the cockpit that was forward and they could see better because they could inspect and adapt faster. They tended to win the dogfights because the, the different jets were, you know, roughly equal in capability. But whichever pilot could inspect and adapt faster was more likely to win the dogfight by a significant margin. Um, so we need really fast feedback loops. So we need these really fast, you know, human feedback loops. Uh, Scrum has these, so does any decent approach to doing Agile well, where, you know, you've got pair programming, you've got the dev team interacting with the customers. Um, but you also need those technical feedback loops. You know, the beauty of an automated unit test is I know within seconds if I mess something up across thousands and thousands of tests, right? Um, these things want to spin off into outer space. And if you don't have fast enough feedback loops, you won't be able to do it. Or I should say transparent. So Bogdan, would, I should say transparency, right? You, would, you lose transparency if you don't have the good engineering practices. And you can't do the good engineering practices if someone is doing what I was doing to Bogdan. Any other thoughts? All right. So let's we've got one what about black black swans in regards to estimation and complexity by luca uh they happen and um you know you can't there's always the possibility of lateness right you cannot eliminate that you just uh you know, you may find a way to work around it. Um, you may not. You could end up hitting a fundamental physics problem uh, that you can't solve. Um, and that you didn't know was there. I mean, that it's unlikely, but, but it happens. We had, for example, uh, ah, thank you. Uh, we had a project once where where there was uh, image processing involved, and by by sheer definition of the hardware we were using, it had some lag of 200, 300, 400 milliseconds, and it influenced uh, human reactions a lot. So there we ran, for example, into hardware issue. Not much we could do, and very very late into project. And I'm sure everybody has war stories of, of that type. So I promised you all some bonus content. Um, oops, did I do it wrong? I think I did. I'm a bad man. Uh, it popped up. Oh, you see the change event? You see the pretty, okay. So I have about 15 minutes or so here on this. I got to make myself, all right. Okay, so just real quick. Um, I find that when I'm doing transformations, there are a few, uh, I see a few patterns. Um, 
And, you know, the idea is that, you know, we do, we do a transformation and everything gets better and, you know, uh, we get better forecast accuracy, morale's better, transparency's better. Yay, life's, you know, great. We have, we all get to ride around on a unicorn. Um, uh, and if done well, it, all these things are true, but uh, how do we get there? Um, we just spent an hour talking about this. Um, and we mentioned, you know, it's not that traditional practices are a little bit wrong. They're fundamentally misapplied to this kind of work. It's, it's not a little bit broken, it's crazy broken. And you have to basically, you know, completely approach it from a different mindset if you're gonna be successful. Um, most of the current problems are structural in nature. You know, don't blame the person doing the work, blame management. Um, uh, the current ecosystem is what's driving those behaviors. Usually those behaviors are because management doesn't understand uh, the nature of the work and they're applying the wrong kind of uh, force, the wrong kind of management paradigm to the work. Um, and that's anyway, so they're applying the wrong decisions, which is grounded in the fact that they don't understand, which is sad as this little doggy is sad here. Um, this doesn't mean that we don't need good cultural leadership. You know, we need, we still need someone to have the courage to, to lead us to a good or a good place to have the courage to do things that are emotionally hard to deal with. Um, so that's still important, but it's just not enough. We need, we need more. Um, back to the alligators. Um, if you want someone to change, uh, you can talk about how there's, you know, fruit trees and nice weather and all this, and people won't change. If you tell them there's an alligator that's about to eat them, they'll run away. Um, so in the same way, if we want people to change, change is hard for all of us. I should be going to the gym every day, but I'm not, but I promise you that if I was in the army, the, uh, the drill sergeant would really quickly make sure that, that it was easier for me to do the exercises I should be doing than to not do them. So when the pain of not changing is greater than the pain of changing, people will change. Um, I'm not saying you want people to change because they want to change, but this is also true because people are just stubborn little boogers. Um, uh, I've seen three models. One's an attractor, one's a studio model or a bubble, and one's a pool-based model. Um, the attractor model is simple. Um, we help people with things that they want help with. We don't help them with things they don't want help with. Uh, the good news is you don't get blowback. So, uh, you're not going to upset people because you're only helping them with things they want. The downside is as soon as a change is a threat to someone in positional authority, you'll hit a brick wall. Just, what was that? Oh, okay. Um, and, and feel free to ask questions as I go. Although we've got uh, about 10 minutes before we got to switch. Um, one model, a second model is a studio model. Uh, so the scrum studio model is one. Uh, another word for this is you have a walled garden where we're going to, within this walled garden, we're going to run some new execution paradigm, right? It might be scrum, it might be XP, it might be some Kanban mechanism, but whatever it is, if you're inside of this bubble, you agree to play by the rules. You don't have to be in the bubble. It's volunteer only, but if you're in the bubble, you play by the rules. So I've heard it called a bubble. I've heard it called a studio model. I've heard it called a, a walled garden, but it's all the same concept that we're gonna have this isolated thing. Um, the great news here is that uh, uh, things inside the bubble, they get better. The, uh, uh, you know, you'll get better forecast accuracy. You'll get better morale. Your quality will be way better. Um, Everything will improve if you're using a, a, a management paradigm that is a good fit for the work. So for example, if you're doing software engineering, Scrum or XP type practices, that they work. And you accept that, you know, you treat estimates purely as estimates and you manage to that reality and you will get better, better, better performance. Now what will happen outside of the bubble is you'll have some influence uh, in the rest of the organization uh, 
it's in somewhat by osmosis and in somewhat in a good way. You'll also have people that are uh, that start to say all the words, but their behaviors are not aligned, right? So they'll they'll kind of uh, it it looks bad that the that the studio model or the bubble or the walled garden is radically outperforming the rest of the organization. It makes the people, the rest of the people in the organization go, oh, well, we're not, we're not able to produce this. And they'll figure out ways to obscure just how great the performance difference really is. Um, so that's, you know, some of the problems with the studio model. Another problem is that you'll have people that are still suffering from, uh, 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 from the tyranny that's happening uh, in the rest of the organization. People are being held accountable for things they don't, they don't control, which I think is almost immoral. Uh, and you're not able to save those people. You're only able to save the people that are in your walled garden. Uh, another, a third model, and these kind of build on each other. Uh, when the studio model is ongoing, it doesn't mean that you're not also using the attractor model within within that walled garden so within the walled garden if someone wants help you help them with it but you may not force it on them so you're kind of doing both right uh these 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 techniques build on each other uh, the third the third model is an executive pull model and and this has two hats uh, the first hat is an advisory hat which is basically the same as the attractor model so you help people with that which they ask for, but you don't push yourself on them. If someone comes to me and says, hey, James, uh, I've heard that I should be doing uh, test-driven development. And I'll say, oh, well, okay, how can I be of service? And, and let me show you how you know, this is done, how I've seen it done in some other context and see if that helps you. Um, maybe I'll sit with you. If you, someone asked, if a product owner asked, well, how do I do release planning the way that I used to? How do I get the same kind of release forecast that I used to when I'm working in uh, uh, when I'm working in an agile model how do I do how do I do that because we can't treat estimates as commitments right um, and so I'll help them with the tools that one uses to do that which of course is you know pretty simple you look at velocity and other things and you're able to figure out where how far down the product backlog you're likely to get and then realize that that's a you know a range really then uh, they might ask, well, you know, I'm a senior manager in the organization. What should I be expecting of people? What can I do to help move things forward? But whatever those questions are, I provide counsel on the things they ask for, but I don't force myself on them or whoever's doing the coaching, the transformational role. But the second, the second pillar to this approach or the second hat that needs to be worn is that you somehow have to drive transparency. You somehow have to make people make it obvious when there's problems so people want to change. Um, remember, they're not going to change unless there's an alligator about to bite them or unless the pain of not changing is greater than the pain of, of uh, the pain of change, unless the pain of not changing is greater than the pain of changing. Um, anything that gets transparency is cool with me. Uh, here's, here's four approaches to doing it. Uh, here, sorry, here's four techniques. They're not the techniques, they're a tech, they're, you know, potential techniques, uh, supporting practices, if you will. Um, one is uh, we do some sort of uh, routine assessment. So we measure the team. We have, you know, you sit with the team and you have the team self-assess itself, itself on a variety of measures. Maybe you kind of audit that as an external agent to make sure that we're, uh, we're being honest with ourselves. You make sure that whatever your measures are, are not measures that drive bad behavior. So something like, do we have unit tests on every definition of done? Do we have unit tests on our definition of done? And do we follow our definition of done? Those are actually good measures. Uh, do we always, are we, do we have perfectly accurate forecast? Probably would drive bad behavior. Um, and it's not a measure of the team's performance that you're really worried about. What you're really trying to do is hold the middle management layer accountable for helping teams to grow. I don't actually care what the numbers are. I care what the trending is. And again, you have to be very careful of the measures. But here, what you're trying to do is provide a way to put transparency on 
whether or not people are serving those they have the privilege to lead. And if one, if the teams under one director were doing a whole lot better than the teams under another director, it's probably an indication of that director's, uh, uh, the level to the degree to which that director is removing impediments for the team and otherwise serving the team and creating a structure that is, that is uh, uh, supportive. Um, leadership scrum, uh, take all the people that would otherwise go around and causing trouble and trying to micromanage everybody, typically your middle management layer, stick them on a stick them on a scrum team or stick them on whatever execution model you're using at the team level. So if you're using XP at the team level, you might use XP at the leadership level. If you're using Kanban at the execution level at the, you know, at the, at the cutting face for the individual contributors, you might use Kanban here. Um, and here your backlog, instead of being, uh, instead of being, you know, work on the product itself, it's organizational improvements. I think Les calls this an impediments service. So you can think of this as an impediments remo removal service. If we're doing Scrum, all the same transparency mechanisms that are used uh, in, in a normal product team are being leveraged here as well to help the team come to gel and to take ownership and accountability for making sure to, to serve others, uh, to remove impediments. Um, obstacle board process. Uh, so the idea here is that at each team level, you have some obstacle board. Uh, people put sticky notes on the obstacle board. This is one dummy example. Uh, it might identify the team that created it, what the problem is. If the team knows what the answers are or has some ideas what the answers might be, they might list those. Um, and then, uh, so you'd have some sort of board they'd stick these to. And again, this is one design. You could make any design you want. And then one of the key elements here is that the uh, via some rel relatively non-subjective criteria, if an obstacle stays at a team level for too long, then it should automatically move to the next level. Say if it lives for more than three days, it should automatically be moved to the director board. If it stays at the director board for three days, it should automatically get moved to the executive sponsor board. At least it's something that the, that the CTO needs to be aware of so they, can, so they can help serve those they have the privilege to lead. Um, and again, the, the, what we're trying to do here is create transparency, create an information flow up the food chain so that the, the people in management roles can serve those they have the privilege to lead. And so that it becomes very evident to your sponsor, whether or not your management layer is actually helping the teams to come into alignment with the execution model, whatever that is, and serving, serving the people that uh, they're supposed to lead. Because if you don't, they're going to do the old behaviors they're used to doing, which is micromanage everything like they always did. Because historically they were responsible for, uh, delivery. But in a scrum model or any decent agile model, the, it is the development team that is accountable for delivery. The only role of management is to ensure that the development team has what they need in order to be able to do delivery. So it's a, it's just a you're flipping the org on its head. A fourth technique, and I'm sure there's a fifth and a sixth and a seventh is, uh, as an external coach, it's not uncommon that I have a reporting relationship way up into the top so that I am personally protected from, uh, uh, from telling the truth basically. Right. So, so your sponsor, someone who has enough authority to mess with the org chart, um, and, and is far enough up that your QA and your dev and your UX and your ideally even your, your product ownership roles are rolling up into that person. Uh, they need to see the truth. And if you're not careful, this is like monkeys in a tree. Um, the, monkey, the monkey at the top looks down and he sees smiling faces. The monkey at the bottom looks up and does not see smiling faces. He sees the opposite, right? And so it's very easy for messaging to get distorted uh, as it goes up the food chain, especially if it's, if it's something unfavorable to the monkeys in the middle of the tree, right? Uh, so uh, that's this idea is, is you're just on the ground. I guess this could be Gimba 
as well. Is that Gimba, the go see one? Uh, if whoever's doing that transparency, is it protected? You're kind of looking at Clean Eastwood, you know, he's like, go ahead and make my day. You know, uh, the whoever's giving that transparency uh, can and will uh, uh, be shot in the head for doing this. So it's absolutely critical that whoever's doing the coaching, whoever's, you know, helping to, to drive visibility on whether the obstacle boards are actually working and flowing, whoever's, uh, uh, you know, helping establish a leadership scrum and making that work. At any point along the line here, if, if the people providing transparency that, that the people that don't really want to change uh, don't want to hear, if that person is not protected, that person will get shot, right? So uh, that's important. Um, all models are wrong. Some are useful. I am sure there are problems with this model, uh, uh, with these models that I find. The names that you see in practice don't necessarily, I've, I've not seen, other than the Scrum Studio model, I have not seen these models be given names. Uh, but I do find that most people that have been doing agile transformational coaching for a while, they're aware of these models. They just don't necessarily have a name for them all. So I gave my own names just so we could have a handle and talk about them. Um, and there seems to be as good as names as any. Uh, a fourth model would be just to eliminate all those middle managers. Um, I haven't seen that done in practice. I don't know how well that would work or not work. I'm a little skeptical about taking all the great knowledge and having it walk out the door. Uh, but certainly structure drives culture. So uh, uh, that was that. Um, let me go back to, all right. So I wrote a book long ways back. Everything we talked to, to about today in chapter, we talked about uh, The importance of treating estimates as estimates. You remember we had the Stacy matrix, which you'll see in a million, you've probably seen that in a million different books. Um, a little less common is this stuff about, uh, you know, these probability of completion graphs, right? This concept of estimates have to be treated as estimates. Uh, this paraphrase of, of gold rat, right? All that stuff's in the ch second chapter with a whole bunch of conversation around it. These deployment models we just talked about, they're in the, they're in the first chapter. So here you see, talk about, you know, the tractor, the tractor model, the, the uh, studio model, the, the executive pull model, and even things like, uh, you know, the, the pluses and minuses of each one. Uh, which I talked about verbally, the leadership scrum idea, right? The uh, obstacle board idea, right? Again, I didn't invent a lot of this. I just documented it. The, uh, we're going to send out an excerpt of this book that includes the first, the first two chapters as well as the front matter. Um, that's even better than the slide deck. So if uh, you found this stuff useful, um, that's true. And then another thing is, I don't think one, if you buy it, I would always prefer that you buy a physical book because the, the form factor is a little easier. It's got the, the stuff on the top to make it easy to, to find a page quick. Um, it's just nicer in physical form. And it sits on your desk. So when you need to convince your boss to hire me, you can go beat them with this book and say, you got to hire James, you got to hire James, right? But if you do that, you shouldn't have to pay for the digital book. So as long as you let me know that you bought the physical book, I am more than happy to send you DRM free versions uh, of the, uh, I'll send you free copies of, of non DRM version. Uh, uh, I'll send you the PDF and the Kindle, which is a Moby and the, uh, uh, and an EPUB as well. So I'm happy to send that to you. Just connect to me. Let me know. Say, hey, I bought the book. We'll send it to you. And whether you do or not, we're going to send you the first two chapters free anyway. 
Um, I never plan on making money on the book. I'm selling them at cost on, on uh, when you buy them on Amazon, you're paying at cost. Uh, I, I get a few pennies, Amazon makes money, but I don't. Um, most of that's printing cost and shipping cost and just print on demand is pricey. Uh, okay, uh, anything, anything I didn't cover, Bogdan? Are we uh, retrospective? I All right. That's it. Okay, I wish we had time for questions here. We don't. If you go back to that handout, um, let me share screen for, where'd our handout go? Darn it, I will find it. Uh, do do, okay. Uh, share screen. Okay, towards the bottom of that handout, you will see these meeting retrospective guidelines. And the idea is that we're going to set a timer for like five minutes or so. And everybody put in chat what you liked, what you think we could improve in this presentation. And this, this can apply to my presentations as well as to the meetup in general. Um, whatever you think would be helpful um, because that might help Bogdan in the future improve how he runs his meetup. So what did you like about it? What do you want to improve about it? Any ideas that you might have, any things that you might have, and just in order to help us be able to, you know, mentally grok this quickly, we can use these prefixes. Not the end of the world if we don't, but it's nice if we do. Like colon blah blah blah, improve colon blah blah blah, idea colon blah blah blah, and thanks colon blah blah blah. Um, so Let's set a timer for what, maybe what, four minutes? Let's do four. Respect the regex. Respect the regex. Oh, oh, you got a regex built. Okay. All right, here we go. So just type what y'all think is important in the, in the chat and Bogdan will pull it together for us. Great feedback so far, guys. Also, if you want, use me as an anonymizer. I'll repost whatever you say.
yeah, that would help. Yes, fine. Oh. Okay. Uh Bogdan, you wanna you wanna run through anything that, that get clarity on and we don't really uh I'm muted, sorry. So um I'll 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 just run for it so it's public but everybody can read it as well. So double record is possible if possible. Uh, like for the ad agile adoption patterns, improve voting system, uh, improve starting, s the start was not so good, we lost the time on our exercise, uh, improve voting system again, like subject topic, it was very useful, uh, like uh, to split group to work in a small teams, that was, so yes, like the content is max practical, practical and use, useful and awesome. Improved tooling vote to build old fashioned for the UX. Idea presentation would be more entertaining if James was wearing a gorilla costume. Thanks for sharing yeah. your experiences. Thanks for the organization. I like people around in a meeting, improve more life examples, sort of company level examples would be nice. Idea more proactive rounds. Thanks Bogdan and his crew for doing a real good job improve recordings of the previous meetups we do have that like exercises improve explain exercises twice that would help idea use digital timer thanks kudos to Bogdan for bringing up interesting speakers to scrum uh we by the way already have a youtube channel this will go as well to youtube so everything will be available just to know guys uh, like uh, James, thank you for for your book. See you next time. All the best for thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. I appreciate it. Improve speed and length of the meetup. Maybe it's just a personal note, but find this meetup very long. Yes, I agree. But we typically want to do a lot. Maybe sometimes too much. Improve inform us before meetup. What that we'll have to work in groups so we can prepare ourselves. We have lot lots of people during these group sessions. Yes. Uh, we actually sent out a handbook, uh, hand out, maybe, maybe, I don't know, we could have done something differently. I could have been more explicit in the mail. Improve uh, more live examples, some company level examples would be nice. Uh, thanks for sharing knowledge with us. Good everything, excellent breakout rooms, role play on start. It can be better, more engaging people to discuss results of the poll, agreed. Uh, a look from a developer perspective, not only management. And final two, improve right somewhere what the task is once we vote. Yes, internet can go off. Yes, from time to time. Thanks for organizing this is great and improve examples of overcoming executive blindness. I would say that, that we raised quite a few questions going through it. Uh, there are some definitely things that we need to technically iron, iron out. Thanks for, for your support, guys. This is only third time we are doing it. So I'm, I'm sure we'll get better over time in technical and regarding speakers, as you see, we're trying to, to get them from all, all over the world and the best ones if possible. If not, I'll, I'll have to speak next time. <laughs> no, so what, cool, what cool speaker do you have coming next? Cool speaker next. Actually, it's uh, it, uh, those are the two local ones. One is uh, co-organizer Boris, uh, who, Boris Magash, who is who is a Scrum master now, and he is going to pull up his friend Carlo. Uh, don't don't take it uh, personally, Carlo. I'm terrible with surnames, and Carlo was mentoring him on his. Uh, road to becoming a scrum master he was coaching him so they'll take up their personal story on how did it went what are the tips and tricks learns it's and going to be in english 
Uh, no, that one will be in in the Croatian, Serbian, Montenegrin, oh. so local. Okay. But okay. maybe we can. I don't know. We can we can discuss it. Good. I can talk with Carlo to do whole meetup in English. It's not problem well, for us because we're you know working. What? We'll see how it goes. Because basically the idea was that we are more or less local group trying to bring in a few few. Um, speakers from from the states or US or wherever but so that that that's why we'll have some some local language ones some some uh, English ones and see how it goes okay Thank you. So, feel free to reach out to me if anybody needs to reach out you're more than welcome to do it so please do as well Feel free to, to reach out directly. Feel free to write in a meetup, share images, do whatever. We are, we are here to, you know, meet, share experience and have some fun most of all. With that, have a pleasant Wednesday and see you next week, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.